Aftermarket parts, where to buy. Now, a lot of you were waiting for part three of the parts video, and I'm sorry it didn't show up sooner. I feel like, I feel a little bad about this, but um, uh, that video may have disappeared somewhere, so we had to redo it. But anyway, that's okay. <laughs> if any of you find a random video about Mercedes parts on YouTube posted on some other channel, please let us know. But um, aftermarket parts are a big dilemma because there's so many good companies and so many bad companies. And I found that you can't trust every single supplier, every single part from every single supplier. So first of all, I'm going to talk about some of the websites where I tend to buy aftermarket parts and where I think that, that they they excel. So uh, some sites I like are Autohaus Arizona, AutohausAZ.com, German, H-A-U-S, not H-O-U-S-E, RM European, FCP Euro, um, what's another good one, uh, Authentic Classics if you have a 280SL, and um, occasionally I will find stuff that I really need on Pelican parts, but I find in general Pelican parts is overpriced. Now, some of the really big parts movers like Parts Geek and Rock Auto, I don't always find the best deals on those two sites. And they tend to carry everything, so you don't really have as good quality control as some of, with the other, as some of the other sites do. So RM European, for example, uh, or Auto Haas AZ, they're mostly, they mostly specialize in moving Mercedes parts, although they sell junk for other cars too. But, you know, they, they, they typically do a good job of this. So, you know, those sites, are, you're pretty safe dealing with them. Now, when you're dealing with different parts brands, I know things can be really confusing. Okay, so a lot of the brands, can, you can find mixed results with different brands. So one of the brands that I find is, you know, has such a trail of carnage linked to it that we can't, I can't really begin to describe it as Euro parts, U-R-O. But Euro does produce some stuff that's, usable and decent so you know i i can't say that i wish they didn't exist i'm glad they exist i'm glad they're trying to improve their 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 product quality but anytime i have a mechanical or an, or an electrical assembly i try to avoid using euro parts now there's some good deals they have that are almost too good to be true like if you need a blower fan for a 123 euro parts is a fan for 70 bucks whereas mercedes has one for 450 dollars if you have a 123 and you're trying to maintain the car in a budget, by all means, buy the Euro parts fan. There's nothing wrong with that. But for the most part, most items from Euro should be approached with caution, especially because they don't put a country of origin on their part stickers. Now, another brand that I have found mixed results from is Phoebe. Phoebe flex disc kits are actually SGF flex discs, which are genuine Mercedes. So. They're, they're, not a, they're not a bad deal at all, but then you start looking at things like drive shaft supports, which are made in China. And unfortunately for a 123, if you need a drive shaft support, Phoebe seems to be the only option. Uh, you start looking at things like suspension parts, and again, you get a mixed bag. There are suspension parts for the 108, 109, 111, and 113 subframes. Their control arm bushing kits are fine. Uh, you know, they're a lot cheaper than Mercedes. Their rocker arms are fine. They're all made in Germany. But then you start looking at stuff like their transmission mounts, which are made in China, their engine mounts, also made in China, their, um, I don't know, what else, what other garbage do they make? Uh, Phoebe, Phoebe, again, is, is Ferdinand Bilstein, should not be confused with, with uh, Bilstein shock absorbers, which is a, th a division of Thyssen and Krupp, which you know, they make elevators and hydraulics. So Bilstein shock absorbers are always safe. They always seem to do a good job. Sox is another really good brand. Limforder is generally a good brand. I found issues with Limforder tie rods that are made in Turkey and Limforder 123 guide rod bushings, which are made in uh, Italy. Those things wear out like crazy. Just spin the 200 and change on the Mercedes part. Uh, but generally, Limforder is okay because it's a division of ZF and their, their, their quality control is really good. Now, uh, some other good brands that I really love are FAG, 
Uh, FAG makes bearings and clutch hydraulics. ATE is generally another trustworthy brand. Uh, Bear used to be a trustworthy brand, but then they started doing things like making AC dryers and some of their electrical switches in China. And after that, quality control slid. And in fact, if you want a good AC dryer, you should look at a Hansa or an ACM. But what I think a lot of it boils down to is country of origin. If an item is made in the EU, the quality standards are going to be much higher than for an item that is made in China, uh, Taiwan, Vietnam, Turkey. Most of the developing world countries have a problem delivering quality parts. Now, I'm not talking about independent manufacturers. There's a guy on eBay, 114 Silo, who sells a lot of uh, reproduction trim for, for 114 and 108 series cars, and he's he's doing his best. You know, not all of his stuff is perfect, but nevertheless, I'm impressed with things like his dashboards and trunk mats and stuff. I think he's doing good. Uh, but when you start looking at these major enterprises, like Maley, for example, there's another one. Maley used to make good stuff, and then they they just plummeted off a cliff somewhere along the way and now you really have to scrutinize everything that they that they do uh, similarly when you look at um when you look at some of the mercedes internal brands mercedes has an internal brand called phoenix that makes all their rubber products phoenix items phoenix harburg parts were never available outside of the mercedes-benz parts network but if you see the little phoenix it's like a triangle on a rubber part and you don't know its origin, then you know it's Phoenix and you know it's good. So knowing what to look for also helps. But country of origin is the most important thing with shopping for aftermarket parts. You know, once you've determined country of origin, shop around and just get the best deal depending on the site. And if a part's not available, sometimes you can go on eBay and look for an, an, uh, a, a decent part. But one note of caution about eBay, Oftentimes, people are marking parts up way above their list price, so eBay should always be a last resort if you can't get something elsewhere. Anyway, before I end this video, I have to leave a disclaimer. The disclaimer is that none of the suppliers or websites that we mentioned in this video have paid us for an endorsement. We are basically just individuals who are identifying the strengths and weaknesses of the different suppliers and parts brands available on the market without any sort of compensation whatsoever from these manufacturers, resellers, distributors, suppliers, or any other parties involved with the sale or manufacture of these parts. Now, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you felt I have left something out and you have additional questions, just drop me a line and let me know that I've missed something or that you have an additional question and I will do my best to answer you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, thank you to all of our Patreon subscribers. I really appreciate you guys and enjoy working on and buying parts for your Mercedes-Benz.